on December 20th, 1907, the New York Times front page reported details of a mining disaster in Pennsylvania. Although hundreds of coal miners had lost their lives, the newspaper carried the unusual headline of the Pittsburgh Press. St. Nicholas Peace Saves the Russians. And another headline captions at the time included the Pittsburgh Gazette Times. Majority of victims Americans, foreign workers lay off to go to church and escape death. Pittsburgh Dispatch. Many of the victims are English, English speaking men. Foreigners escape <clears throat> owing to religious holiday. <clears throat> What was the story behind these headlines? <coughs> On December 19, 1907, at least 239 coal miners were killed in an explosion at the Dar Mine and Van Meter in the southwestern corner of Pennsylvania. This remains the fourth worst coal mining disaster in U.S. history, and everyone inside the mine was killed. <coughs> However, it could have been much worse. The number of victims could have been doubled. The death roll was not some 500 because 19 of December is St. Nicholas's Day according to the old calendar and some 250 faithful Car Carpathian Russians, immigrant, coal miners, had taken an unpaid day off work to celebrate his memory. For even the greedy coal mine owners, who otherwise have virtually complete control over the miners with their threats of dismissal, knew that they could not force Carpathia Russians to work on 19th of December on St. Nicholas Day. For St. Nicholas is the patron saint of shepherds, and one reason why he has been the Carpathia Russian patron saint for centuries. <laughs> And thanks to his intercession, men and boys, some perhaps as young as ten, survived to become fathers of hundreds and grandfathers of thousands. Had it not been for this miracle, more than a thousand would have been widowed and orphaned, which in 1907 would have been financial destitution for those for there would have been no assistance from companies or government agencies in those days. Newspaper reports of the 11.30 a.m. explosion that took place in the middle of the church service, that there was a terrible noise and the ground shook as if there were an earthquake. Immediately everyone realized that there had been an explosion in the mine and they rushed to help find survivors. Although it was against the few regulations that did exist at the, mine at the time, the mining company had allegedly inter interconnected more than one mine, which devastated a large area of the mine on both sides of the river. In the end, many bodies could not be identified and were placed in a mass grave and although probably higher, the official death toll was 239. This is a very interesting story, and we can take uh, many approaches to that. And what we can learn from that, again, a terrible disaster, 239 workers died, English-speaking men. And it's terrible tragedy. But also, this happened on Thursday. Many of these coal miners took a day off from work. Is it coincidence Thursday? Just to let you know that in Byzantine tradition, every day is dedicated, like Monday is dedicated to Holy Angels, Tuesday is to St. John the Forerunner, St. John the Baptist, Wednesday is to the Holy Theotokos, Thursday is dedicated to St. Nicholas. That happened on Thursday. Friday is to the Holy Cross, Saturday for the fallen asleep or the departed.
Barnabas and Sunday is the day of the Lord. Is this really coincidence that if this miracle spared lives of hundreds of people who decided not to go to work but go to church happened actually on Thursday? It is a miracle. Could we think that those 250 workers were just dumb immigrants, bullheaded, that they decided not to go to work, but they were risking lives. They were risking dismissal from work. They were risking their future because of such an important holy day. Where I'm heading with all this is if someone asked you today, who is God and what is your relationship with God? What is my relationship with God as a priest? What would you say? If you go out there and ask someone on the street, who is God? Who do you think people are going to say? Are they going to say perhaps something like the divine liturgy describes God? There's some one million dollar words, but it's deep and beautiful if you think about it. For you are God ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing yet ever the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us out of non-existence into being and again raised us up when we had fallen. <coughs> and left nothing undone until you brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. Or perhaps, as one of the first antiphons says, Lord our God, mighty beyond description, glorious about all understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and on this holy church, O Master, and show us and those who pray with us the riches of your tender mercy. What is our relationship with God? Why, why is this world limiting God to be such a small being? Scientifically, they say the universe is about 50 billion light years huge. If you think about it, light travels 300,000 kilometers per second. It's about 180 miles per second. Now the universe is as big as 50 billion light years. It's humongous. And it started with God. Even the science says that the molecules had a start and collide, that big bang, if you, if you will. Well, who moved those two molecules? There had to be a higher being. <clears throat> Read Thomas Aquinas if you don't believe it. It's huge. And God is holding this universe on his arm. And we, because of the technology, we're limiting God to something. Well, it's maybe just a fairy tale. What is my relationship with God? As I'm preparing for my iconography classes and I'm trying to explain about Adam and the new Adam, Christ, this is what the Holy Fathers are saying about Adam. The fathers of the church considered sin to be an omission, leading as a sense of God's absence rather than as the transgression of a legal code. The fall of Adam stems fundamentally from a lack of love, which destroys communion with God. His willful submission to the temptation, the power, and the envy turned him into a predator who could no longer see the value in a creation directed towards the praise of God. Rather, he could 
regard creation only as an object of consumption. Ingratitude toward God was thereby aggravated by profaning of the cosmos that transformed creation into a mere material object. Accordingly, Adam missed his vocation as priest for the world, destined originally to make a Eucharist from the Greek word Echaristos, to give thanks of all things as we are called to do by Christ, the new Adam. And as we pray at the Divine Liturgy, offering you your own from your own, always and everywhere, to give thanks. Adam missed that point. But Adam represents all humanity, and it's happening in our lives as well. What Adam does, instead of giving thanks, offering thanksgiving, Adam is challenging God. That's his fault. And we do the same. Instead of giving thanks and praising God, we challenge God. Today we hear a beautiful gospel of ten lepers. Only one comes back to give thanks for what happened to him. One out of ten comes back to Christ. Do I know how to give thanks? Do I actually thank God for things that I did not even get in my life because most likely I didn't need them? And we can think that those people, those minor, were dumb people. We can think that. But let me tell you, my grandmother, my grandfather, they were hard workers. I never miss a day seeing them praying. Every single day they were praying. My grandma, she broke her leg. One mile walking to church on crutches. What drove her there? What a beautiful relationship she had with God. Simple woman, two years of school. She was not blinded by the nonsense of technology. Having iPads, computers, beautiful cars. Because this makes us to live in God to something. He's probably just a fairy tale. What kind of relationship we have with God? As those miners were being trapped. How many times are we being trapped in the mines of this world? The paper says they could not even identify some of these minors. How many times we as Christians cannot be even identified as Christians anymore. People don't see our relationship with God anymore. Our own relationship, our experience with God. So today, don't take it this is a blame. Not at all. Take that as a challenge. I take that as a challenge. There are many people out there being trapped in this world. Being trapped doesn't mean that they're dead already. But they need to find a way out. And we may be the only one as Christians to help them get out and try to find a way back to Christ. I'm going to conclude with one sentence and think about it on your way home. I'll think about that too. As a Christian, I may be the only Bible some people will read. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Christ.